Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, my friends, we got a brand new update here in Call of Duty Warzone. One of the biggest updates that we've seen in quite some time. Uh, physically, it's not the smallest update in the world. It's like 25 gigs on every platform. Uh, but as far as content goes, this is a huge update. The season three update is now live for everyone. And it brings a lot of stuff to the game. We're talking weapons, we're talking map changes, all sorts of really, really cool stuff. So today we're going over everything that just changed in the brand new season three update. As always, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. Uh, let's go for 5,000 likes on this one, the rare 5,000 like goal. Uh, let's see if we can hit that. And of course, if you're new here or if you're part of the 54% of viewers who aren't already subscribed to the channel, I am always covering everything going on in COD, news, intel, updates, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe, that way you can always stay up to date. Also, if you want to check out the newest sponsor on the channel, Gamer Advantage by far has the best blue light glasses out there. And right now, Code Immortal actually gets you 15% off your order as opposed to the normal 10%. So if you want to take advantage of that increased discount, Code Immortal has got you covered. So let's start first with the new content. Uh, right away, what we have active right now is the battle pass for the season. Of course, this is a pretty standard thing at this point. Uh, but from this, you can access the main operator for the season, which is Wraith alongside the two new ranged weapons. Uh, these are actually free tiers, so so long as you get to tier 15 and tier 31, you can unlock these weapons. You don't actually have to buy the full pass. Uh, but at tier 15, we've got the PPSH SMG, which you already know is a classic Black Ops weapon. Thing is an absolute beast. Then over at tier 31, we've got the K31 Sniper, which I'm especially curious to try out and see if this can actually compete with like the Car 98K in Warzone. Uh, honestly, I think we got a pretty good selection for new DLC weapons within the pass. Oh, and if you uh, are more interested in the entire pass, I did already post a full video going through all the tiers and unlocks you can get in it. That'll be linked in the description below and then on screen at the very end of the video if you want to check out that one after watching this one. Now, we also have the Hunt for Adler event starting at 1 p.m. Pacific time on the 22nd. Uh, so this afternoon, we should have that live. That'll actually grant you access to an exclusive Adler skin if you end up completing all the challenges. Another huge update with the launch of Season 3 that isn't actually content related, but rather gameplay related, is that of DLSS for all NVIDIA RTX 3060 cards and higher. Uh, if you have one of those graphics cards, you'll be able to capitalize off of DLSS within Warzone now, and you should experience a pretty noticeable FPS boost on various resolutions. Definitely a huge update for PC players to help better optimize the game and just uh, make it a bit more smooth in general. Now, we also got part two of the Warzone event this afternoon. Of course, part one was the whole destruction of Verdansk LTM, uh, where we actually saw the nuke go off. I do have a full video of that up on the channel now as well, if you haven't already seen that. Uh, but then, after that came to a conclusion, we got sent over to Rebirth Island, which is now actually the only playlist or map available in Warzone. And this is actually Rebirth Island at night. So uh, obviously the lighting has changed up quite a bit here. There's also a brand new location on the map too, I think it's pretty cool. I really like the whole aesthetic going on here. Then on top of that, if you're uh, if you're paying attention while on Rebirth Island, if you look off the coast to the west, you'll actually see like the giant mushroom cloud explosion on Verdansk in the distance, which I think is just so, so cool to actually be able to see that in real time. Of course, you're playing on Rebirth 15 minutes after the whole uh, LTM, the destruction of Verdansk. So you see the mushroom cloud explosion in the distance. There's actually like ripples coming across the, uh, the sea as well. So it just looks really, really cool. I'm sure you're also probably wondering about Verdansk or the new Warzone map. And as of right now, when I'm recording this, as the update is going out, currently Rebirth is still the only map in play. But according to the Call of Duty Twitter, it seems like something else could be coming around noon Pacific time today with the next part of the event. Then, of course, this patch also features multiple different backend changes and various other adjustments like that. Uh, mics were disabled in infinite respawn modes like Plunder, for instance. The loot was updated to fit with Season 3 and now exclusively consists of Cold War weapons, so you're not going to find any Modern Warfare weapons as ground loot. And then also, this loot includes the new K31 Sniper and the PPSH. They also changed the Semtex a bit, and now if you ever stick a player with a Semtex, it's always going to down them. Uh, that to me is probably a pretty big W just because it uh, gives you that sort of reward for actually sticking a player. Obviously not the easiest thing to do, so if you do do it, uh, you are going to be rewarded with a down. For bug fixes, they fixed an issue with the Cold War barrels and their hip fire and ADS idle sway being increased when they shouldn't have been. Uh, they fixed the bug with the ZRG 20mm optics. They fixed an issue with the loot dropping too close to other loot sometimes. They fixed an issue with an invincibility glitch when being downed in a helo. An issue with operators in Modern Warfare. An issue with Baker's operator mission. Then also an issue with the FFAR and certain operator models. Now, for the weapon tuning, there is a ton here for specific weapons, then also for specific attachments. So I'd say buckle in, it's going to be a wild ride here. 
Uh, the AK-47 from Cold War had its recoil adjusted. The Farah 83 had its damage increased and its range increased, alongside also getting a recoil adjustment. The FFAR had its damage decreased, its neck multiplier decreased, and its upper torso damage decreased. Then it also got an ADS speed penalty as well. Uh, in my opinion, this knocks the FFAR off the throne as the best AR, and it definitely opens up the meta quite a bit. The Groza also got its recoil increased, its upper torso damage decreased, and its ADS speed decreased, which uh, is honestly some surprising nerfs. I wasn't expecting the Groza to be touched at all here, but it was. Uh, I would assume sort of to keep it in line with the FFAR. Uh, the Krig actually got a handful of buffs to its damage multipliers. This could honestly be a competitor in the Assault Rifle category now. I'm really curious to see just how good the Krig is. Uh, the QBZ got its move speed and the ADS move speed increased, alongside its neck and upper torso damage multipliers being increased as well. The LC-10 got a bullet velocity increase. The MAC-10 actually got a damage decrease, so a bit of a nerf there. The Pellington got an ADS and a raise time increase. The AUG got a burst delay, so now uh, it's got an even slower fire rate. It was a 33% increase in that delay. Then its neck multiplier was also decreased. The M16 ended up getting the same nerfs, but just in different intervals. Uh, either way, both meta burst weapons have been heavily nerfed, and I would say with good reason. On top of that, the M16 and the AUG each had various changes made to some of the barrels, including the Rapid Fire, the Strike Team, and the Titanium Barrels, so those will all now be a bit different than before. Uh, then the Saikov also had some changes made to the 140mm Auto Barrel, as that damage was actually decreased for both uh, the single Saikov and then the Akimbo Saikovs as well. Then for the lasers, the Ember Sighting Point got a speed penalty reduction, and the Designator is now visible during hip fire and ADS. For the magazines, the Salvo Fast Mag got a speed reduction for ADSing, and the Speed Mag on all pistols, SMGs, and snipers got an ADS speed reduction too. A couple of muzzles got some better concealment with this update. Uh, honestly, nothing crazy there. The Multi Zoom, the Ultra Zoom, and the Vulture Zoom got ADS speed penalty reductions. Then finally, for the rear grips, all of those got their ADS speed reduced by about 10%. Uh, now moving on from the attachment and weapon changes, we also got a brand new update to the Rose skin at long last. Uh, this skin is not going to be as broken as it was before, which is a huge W yet again. And in my opinion, that is one of the best changes this entire update had in it. Now, moving over to Modern Warfare real quick. We honestly don't really have much here, but we do have a brand new playlist update that features Ground War, Blueprint Gunfight, Shoot the Ship for like four weeks in a row now we've had this. You absolutely love to see it. Then we also have Gunfight, 3v3 Knives Only, Livestock Mosh Pit, which is still one of the weirdest playlists we've ever had, uh, then finally Grind. Now, let's talk Cold War content. Of course, because it is a brand new season, that means we've got a lot of new physical in-game content to check out. Uh, starting first with the main lobby, that's now been changed up to fit season 3, so we have a whole new aesthetic there. Uh, we also have a new score streak, the Strafe Run, which of course we've seen before in previous games. It is now back here in season 3. Honestly, I'm probably still rocking like the War Machine or the Death Machine over that with like a UAV and an advanced UAV, but it's definitely not bad by any means. Then there's also the new cargo truck available in Outbreak, and then also over in Zombies, there's now weapon unlock challenges specifically for the Zombies mode, uh, which is definitely a very cool feature. You can now unlock older DLC weapons by playing Zombies if you don't already have them. There's also some brand new maps. We've got Yamantau for 6v6, which takes place on, uh, well, big surprise, Mount Yamantau. We also have Diesel, which is available for 6v6 and 2v2. The Cold War update also featured a handful of multiplayer-specific weapon changes, so the following is just for Cold War multiplayer. And here there was a ton of nerfs and adjustments to the LMGs. The Stoner had its range and damage reduced, its recoil increased, and its ADS speed reduced. Uh, the RPD got its max damage increased, but its max range and its ammo capacity decreased. The M60 also had its range and ADS speed reduced, and it's got a higher probability of horizontal view kick. For the shotguns, the Street Sweeper can no longer get a one-hit kill in core. Uh, they decrease the max damage and they reduce the mid-range pellet damage alongside the various Task Force damage bonuses. On the Howard, they increase the range, but they reduce the range on the Task Force and the uh, damage bonus on the Task Force as well. Then on the Gallo, they increase the mid-range damage, but they actually reduce the max damage. On the rifles, the FFAR got its Task Force recoil reduced. Uh, they increase the magazine size on the 34-round magazine up to 38. They made various adjustments to the 38 round speed mag on top of that as well. On the Krig, they increased the headshot multiplier and they reduced the max damage. I still think this is probably going to be like the go-to rifle for all the uh, CDL players and whatnot. Then for the general rifle attachments, they added an ADS move speed bonus to the ultralight, contour, and mil spec barrels. For the TAC rifles on the AUG, they reduced the max range, they increased the burst fire delay, they increased the max damage and the headshot multiplier, and they also reduced the task force bonuses yet again. Then finally for the weapon tuning on the SMGs, 
They reduce the sprinting speed on all subs, but uh, with specific attachments on some SMGs, you can actually make them be as fast as pistols when sprinting, but for now, uh, pistols are the new fastest weapons in the game. Uh, another interesting change is the arcade, which is now accessible. This lets you play retro Activision games uh, like Chopper Command and Fishing Derby, which honestly, I think is pretty cool. Was not expecting that whatsoever, uh, but hey, I'm here for it. Then finally, the last change I want to mention for the Cold War update before looking at the playlist is that slide canceling was actually nerfed a bit in this update. Now you can't really do it fast at all anymore, so uh, they pretty much got rid of that whole movement mechanic. Now, when it comes to the playlist to round things out, we've got Yaman Tau 24-7, Diesel Faceoff 24-7, so that's going to be 2v2, 3v3. Uh, Sticks and Stones is also there. Nuketown 24-7 is in there. We've also got Gunfight, the Sniper-only Mosh Pit, then the Multi-Team Mosh Pit to close things out. So yeah, there you have it. With all of that being said, that is what changed with the Season 3 update here in Warzone and Cold War. That's going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. And, of course, if you're new here and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in COD, whether it be news, intel, updates, you name it, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe, that way you'll always know whenever I upload a new video. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL for a discount on all SCUF, G Fuel, Gamer Advantage, and Control Freak products. The links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.